So we do thank God tonight for our Bible study on tonight. Um, we know that God's people are the greatest people in the world. Um, God has given us um, this quarter um, for teaching. And as we go through um, this lesson on tonight, and I think about uh, when I think about this lesson on tonight, I also think about uh, what we've been doing in Sunday school, what we did um, been doing in Sunday school, and certainly last Sunday was the uh, beginning of the quarter, was our final quarter for 2022. And as it began, and as the lesson for tonight, um, we start with tonight's lesson, it's a, it's a reminder for the church. Um, we know that we have faced some crisis um, in the world and continue to face crisis. If you look at the world news and the national news, we know we're facing crisis, but we must never forget that our church, what our church was founded on over a hundred years ago, um, our leaders of the church, we're calling for um, a time of fasting, a time of praying. Um, again, our church was built on this foundation. Our church was built on the word of God, the promises of God, and prayer and fasting. So we want to remember that even though the crises are there, uh, remember this, that our God was never and is never caught off guard. He knows he's in control. We sing the song, he, God's in control of my life. He's in control. You better believe it, that he is in control. So he's not caught off guard. Um, so we want to remember this as we, as we live our, our lives, our daily lives, that our church was founded on these principles, the word of God, the promises of God, and fasting and praying. So um, we're going to pray and begin our Bible study tonight. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you tonight, oh God. We thank you, God, for our lives on tonight, God. We thank you, oh God. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We give you the glory. We give you the honor, oh God. God, we thank you tonight for this time of Bible study, oh God. We ask you, oh God, that you will look on us in this Bible study, oh God. Touch us in the name of Jesus. Touch our leader on today, God. We pray now for our pastor, God, for his wife, oh God. We pray for the, his children, his grandchildren. We ask you, oh God, that you will touch them, you will strengthen them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray now, oh God, for each one that's in Bible study on tonight, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you will meet the needs in our lives, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Touch in each home, oh God, that's represented here tonight, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we pray now, oh God, that you will remember the sick on tonight. God, that you will touch their bodies, oh God. Those that are in pain on tonight, God, we ask you, oh God, for healing on tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Touch their bodies, oh God, in the name of Jesus. God, we believe you, oh God. We stand on your word, God, on your promises tonight, God. Touch them in the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Look on our children tonight, God. As they went back to school on today, God, we ask you, oh God, that you will be with them, oh God, in the classrooms, oh God, on the school buses, oh God, as they walk to school, God. Touch them in the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, we praying, oh God, for the teachers, God. We praying, oh God, for the administrators, in the name of Jesus, God, touch them, oh God. Be with them, oh God. Protect them, oh God, from the gang bangers, oh God. Hallelujah. From the mass shootings, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we're dependent on you, God. Hallelujah. We're dependent on you, God. In the name of Jesus, glory to your name, oh God. God, we'll give you the glory, God. We'll give you the praise, oh God. Touch our minds on tonight, God, as we go forth in Bible study, oh God. Hallelujah to your name, oh God. Help us, oh God, to study your word, oh God, and to apply it to our lives, oh God. We pray now, God, for Elder Eaton, oh God, that you will touch him, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Touch his wife, oh God, his children and his family, oh God. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Glory to his name. Hallelujah. So this is Bible study. Okay, y'all, this is Bible study. Uh, I know some of you have your cameras off, and I know some of you have your um, your uh, mics muted, and that's fine. Thank you. 
Um, however, you can unmute your mics if you don't have any background noise. I know some may be at work or whatever, and some may have some background noise, but you can certainly um, uh, have input in our Bible study tonight. So tonight's lesson, uh, our Bible study tonight, we're going to be talking about perseverance, perseverance in prayer. Um, and when we think about perseverance, um, uh, something, a um, word that a term that I think about is um, steadfast. And we sing about it, be steadfast, unmovable. Um, but something that's fixed, when I think about steadfastness and being steadfast, um, I think about being fixed and in place um, and not easily changed. You know, the Bible talks about, tells us, you know, uh, uh, unmovable, steadfast, um, tree planted by the rivers of water. Um, so when we think about steadfast, think about uh, not easily changed. When the winds come up and the um, and, and, and things like that that try to shake us and try to move us, but the word is, is calling for us to be fixed, um, firm in our belief, um, determined, um, determined to determine to to stay with God, determined to see it through. Um, whatever comes, what may come, um, and our pastor have preached many times about uh, the comma. Uh, what side of the comma are you on? Um, but to remember to be uh, determined, firm in in our belief, and to stay there and don't move, uh, and to be consistent. Also, we think about. Uh, Perseverance. Um, how 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 are we at sticking to a pattern? Um, uh, I'm guilty. I see uh, Sister Michelle on, um, and when we were working out uh, consistently, um, you know, two three times a week, the uh, the doctors and they ask us to be consistent in in. Um, in your workout and be consistent in drinking your, your 64 ounces of water every day because it's something about being consistent. Um, it's something about not just doing it one time, you know, once a month or once every six months. It's something about being consistent. So you may not be able to do it as long today, but doing it today, praying today. And so tonight we're going to be talking about perseverance and prayer. Um, and perseverance is one of the many keys of an effective praying life. Do y'all believe that? When we are steadfast in praying, um, even when there is difficulty or even when um, there is a delay in the time that we, um, that we pray. Because, um, you know, the enemy doesn't want us to pray. Y'all believe that? Y'all experience that? When you may have set a time and you said to yourself, this is the time of the day that I'm going to pray. And you know, the enemy is going to bring something to you, some situation, um, um, a memory issue, um, which will um, have a delay in um, our prayer. Uh, there are times when God wants to see the believer persevere when he is reaching, when, when we are reaching out to him. He knows that it is required, it, that it is requires uh, perseverance from the believer to push through even when we have pain, even when we have disappointments. It's something about persevering that requires that faith that we talked about, that pastor's been preaching about now, that faith. That along with the hope for the believer, um, that God will hear them and that God will answer their prayer. Okay, um, so our church is actually being um, the bishop, bishop, our bishop. Everybody know our bishop's name? J. Drew Shear, the bishop for the, the uh, uh, Church of God in Christ. He's calling for the church to go back to those. Um, those roots that we were founded on, as I mentioned earlier, and prayer and fasting is one of them. Um, we got we got away from we didn't say it as much, you know, Tuesdays and Fridays is fasting day for the Church of God in Christ, and that's how we got started for a hundred years. We've been fasting and praying, and um, so so therefore, 
uh, he's asking that we explore the dynamics of prayer in every way that's available for us at this time. Um, but we must remember that God has not been, again, unaware of the things that we're, that's happening in the world today. Right? He's not unaware of that. He's in control. So let's begin our Bible study tonight. Anybody have any questions or comments they would like to say about um, per perseverance in prayer? All right. Um, anyone? So if you do, just unmute yourself. Jesus knew his disciples would get tired and sometimes get frustrated about life. And so as we go into, I have like four, I think four examples that we're going to explore tonight um, about prayer and the situation that was going on. Um, but Jesus knew that his disciples uh, would and get tired and sometimes frust be frustrated about life and the many problems that uh, life would bring. So he taught them the importance of having a consistent prayer life. He let them know that there would be times when they would not feel like praying. Does that sound familiar? Not feel like praying. And he, he wanted to make them aware that they must, what? Always pray. And Paul reminded us that as well in his right. Men are to what? Always pray and not faint. So when we um, think about fainting, what does it mean to faint? You can unmute yourself. What does it mean to faint? Anyone? What does it mean to faint in this context? Give up. Give up. Okay, good. The recording stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, Sis said, give up. And that is not a good uh, uh, position to be in. Because as she said, giving up, um, we're, we won't be able to have or get the results of the promises. We won't get the results of, of faithful prayer life if we give up. Because think about it, when you faint, most times when, when you think about in your mind about fainting, the person, the person is on the floor. They're at a disadvantage. Their position is at a disadvantage because they're on the floor and everybody else is, everybody else are not. They're standing or sitting. But the person that fainted, they're in a, a disadvantage position. Um, and when you faint, you you you're you're not conscious. You're not conscious of what's going on, so you're not able to make the those those decisions that you need to make, right? And you might be at the mercy of others. If they told us in the prison system it's a bad place to faint. You don't want to faint in the prison system. Yes, ma'am. Somebody had their hand raised. Um, I do agree. Um, when we it's. Sometimes when the adversity gets so heavy, um, fainting seems easy um, to not be aware, to not be able to feel in that particular moment where it's so strong, um, where you feel like you can't bear the weight and you are praying and then it's radio silence. And that's when, when the, when it seems like the load gets very heavy, and then you say, "Well, God, you haven't answered, so maybe it's time for me to throw in a towel." Mm -hmm. And you know that's not the case, right? Yes, yes, I understand. Yes, I, I get you know, it. He definitely does not want us to throw in a towel. No, but. You know, it tries the faith. Yes. It, it, try, it puts it to the test. Like the last uh, nerve, the vagus nerve, you know, that rubber band being stretched mm -hmm. as far as you can stretch it. And you have exhausted all options. You're praying, you're fasting. 
um, you know, we're crying out to God. And, and it seems in those moments that he is silent. And at that time, when things are going and we're looking for an answer and we don't hear it, then we fall to our flesh. And that's when we say, okay, maybe I just need to faint or give up. Mm-hmm. 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 And, and um, I, I, I understand what you're saying because um, as some of the examples that we're going to look at uh, tonight, we'll look at a few of them uh, before we go. Um, those people were in those similar situations that uh, Sister Sherelle described because um, I guess I'm, I'm like Paul in, in this regard, in this way that um, I kind of compare a lot of um, our Christian walk with the athlete. Um, I'm not an athlete, but um, I do compare it a lot with like he did in some of his writings because when you think about the muscle and you are lifting weights and you're at your fatigue. And um, if you ever worked with a trainer, they're like, one more, one more, come on, give me one more, one more. And you go like, I can't do one more. I can't push out one more. I can't lift this barbell, not one more time. But the trainer asks you to give him, give him one more, give him one more, one more, because they know that when you fatigue this muscle, and you have done, you have pushed it beyond what you think the limits are. The advantage that you're going to get, the, the strength that you're going to get from that muscle. Woo, I'm trying to tell you, you're not even going to believe how strong you are. And then when you come back next time and you get that barbell and you push it out, you're like, whoa. Look where I've come. Yes, look where. And that's, that's I think, what I analyze that as when I, when I think about that, as, as uh, our brother Paul did, which he's writing, that it's going to be better than you realize if you can push past that muscle fatigue. And that's what he's asking us to do. That's what God is asking. You know, he is not unaware of our situations and just as some of these examples that we're going to um, read about if someone has their bible i think brother friend are you on we got your bible deacon i'm here all right hello um deacon last is going to help us read as well but um uh deacon last can you read uh luke 18 1 through 8 and uh deacon friend can you find for the next one we're going to be in matthew the 26th chapter so right now we're going to read one of the examples that we're going to look at tonight is um, Luke, the 18th chapter, 1 through 8, because this is a situation that was going on with this lady, and uh, I think that's going to um, help us tonight as well. Luke 18, 1 through 8. And he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in the city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, Though I fear Though not I fear God, God, not God, nor regard, nor man, regard man, man, yet because yet this little trouble troubles me, I will avenge her. Least by her continual coming, she weary me. me. And the Lord and the said, Lord Hear what, what the unjust judge says, and not, and, and shall not God, God avenge his own elect? Which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long on them, I tell you that I will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith in the earth. How about this? Look at this testimony of this lady in um, Luke 18. She realized that normal behavior was not going to help her. She understood that 
this 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 judge had no fear of humans. He had no fear of God. I tell you, he was in a bad place in the first place. But anyway, um, therefore, she needed what we would consider extraordinary power. So just as Jesus had said, what men ought to do, what always to pray and not to faint. This woman took that approach and kept doing what? Pushing, coming, coming pushing. Here she goes again. I'm so tired of seeing her. He probably was saying that. Don't let her in. Don't let her in. Not the door. But she came. She kept coming. Persistent. Huh? Persistent. Persistent. She persevered. She kept pushing. She didn't faint. And this man was a terrible man. This is a bad person that don't fear humans or God. So sometimes the believer finds him, find ourselves in a place where we must persevere like this woman because she couldn't go back. She had to go, she had to go, she had to continue going each time until the judge avenged her of her adversary. He must not uh, uh, feel, you know, that he, that, he must not feel that he is worrying God. We must not feel that we're worrying God, but be the believer uh, to be persistent, to receive the deliverance that we are looking for. Because if she would have got tired, if she would have said, hey, this man don't even care nothing about me. He don't care nothing about nobody. He don't care nothing about God. I'm not going to keep going there then she would not have gotten the deliverance that she so desperately needed. Friend, you got the next one. So another example that we're going to talk about is um, uh, the Garden of Gethsemane. Friend. Well, you said Matthew. Matthew 26 and what? Yes. Start at 40. Okay. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, what could ye not watch with me at one hour and watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation? The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm. So what is that saying? Oh, hey. They were, they, these were the folks that was walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus, eating with Jesus, um, seeing his miracles as he was performing these miracles. And now here's Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And they were not able to last. They were all, they fell asleep. They were tired. Just when Jesus needed them, <laughs> They were tired. After asking them to watch and pray with, with him, they still couldn't do it. He came back and he checked on them and they were what? Asleep. He asked them, couldn't you do what? Watch with me, yes. How long? Just one hour. Just one hour. That's not a long time. And look what he's saying, that temptation would come upon you. Mm-hmm. Because he knew the tempter was there. And that's how he was playing to his body. And he needed them to be awake and watch and pray too that they wouldn't fall into the temptation of forsaking him. Mm -hmm. Big hallelujah. Yes. Mm. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So when he came back the second time, he found them asleep again for their eyes was heavy. He left them and, and went to pray a third time. When he got back, he told them to continue to sleep. <laughs> they could not persevere. They were not persevering. Jesus had to persevere in his own prayer until he was able to um, drink uh, of that bitter cup that he was praying about to his father about and, and what he had to face. When Jesus came to earth, we knew that one day that he would die for our sins and, and he, this day had came. 
and he had to he had to go that alone. Hallelujah. Any questions, any comments? There's one more example, John, the fifth chapter I would like to review. Um, John, the fifth chapter. Okay. Let's start at the first verse. Uh, let's start at the second, I think. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season unto the pool and troubled the water. Wheresoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped into step in was made whole and whatsoever disease he had he ever had continue yes continue and a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, Will you be made whole? The empty man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming another step down before me, Jesus said unto him, Rise and take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. Thank you. Thank you. So this example, what is this example showing? Anyone? There's another one too that's in John that where uh, Jesus healed another blind man. And this man, he um, he also uh, did, did some things. He, uh, y'all remember, he used a spit, right? Y'all remember that one? And um, he put his hands on the man and asked the man if he could see. And the man also replied that he 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 could see, but he he saw men as what? Miss Bible said, y'all. He saw men as what? Trees. He saw men as trees. And then Jesus, who has the power of life and death, who has the power to heal all manner of sickness and diseases, and we know this, he had to put his hand unto the man a second time. <laughs> and at that point, before the man could see. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. uh -huh. mm -hmm. And so, uh, we, when we look, we got one more example to look at, and then that'll be it for tonight. Um, uh, Deacon Frank, can you read Luke 5 and 4? This is being persistent. Now, um, when you look at the man at the pool, um, you know, he he had an excuse. He had an excuse because um, as we read in the scripture, the first person that would get in after the angel would come and touch the water would be healed. But so this man didn't have anyone to do. So he had an excuse, but Jesus had the answer for him. Yes. So Luke 5 and 4 will be our final example tonight that we'll look at. It's our last example that we'll observe. Um, and we'll just read uh, verse 4. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draft. Mm -hmm. So and the Simon disciples who, who we know were expert fishermen because... Um, you know, we saw how Jesus, when Jesus was, was uh, going out with his disciples, looking for disciples, these, these fellas, they were fishermen. They were fishermen. And we know the story that they had told all night and they had caught nothing. So, but when Jesus arrived, um, they had left their ships and they were washing their nets because they didn't catch anything. So they were calling it, hey, this is it. Let's, let's just wash our nets and get our stuff together and get out of here. Um, but when Jesus arrived, um, he entered to one of the ships and he said, what did he say, D uh, Deacon Brand? And four? Let, 
launch out into the deep. Mm-hmm. And let, and let down, let your, down your, your neck for a drought. Mm, mm-hmm. Because Peter explained that, and then Peter explained as it go on, that they had already done that. Told all night. <laughs> Told all night. And they were getting disgusted. They got yes. discouraged. And a lot of times that's a hindrance in our life. It'll yes. work one time. And if it don't work the second time, don't work the third, I'm done. Mm-hmm. And we throw in the towel. Mm-hmm. And in this walk of life, not only must we be perseverant, uh, but we need to have some stickability. Mm-hmm. That means stick to it. Stick, let's stick to prayer. Stick to living right. Mm-hmm. Let, let's, let's stick to uh, in our witnessing. Mm-hmm. You know, stick to singing. Mm-hmm. You know, the things that help make us strong. We got with the past our service about the human element. Don't forget that. That yeah. this God, what God do, but what are we doing? Because the chairs are few. What am I doing? Mm-hmm. I'm there. Am I opening my mouth? Am I singing? Am I praying? Am I clapping my hand? Or am I looking at the empty seats? Stickability. God yes. is still God. He still accepts our want our praise. Mm-hmm. Right? Amen. Praise is comely and it's for us. Mm-hmm. It helps us. It mm-hmm. helps our psyche, believe it or not, when we apply ourselves into the walk with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. So, Peter also, uh, they also exhibit, I said, not only perseverance, but, oh, uh, and I said stickability, but obedience. He said, well, Lord, yes. you know how we did, you know how children tell, I might have did it one time, one I did time. it twice, I don't want to do it no more. I just don't want to do it. But Peter said, add that word. Yes. Almost sarcastic. Mm-hmm. Okay, since you said so. Mm-hmm. And then when they went to bring it up, what God do? He did the overload on them. That's right. They broke the necks. Then their faith came about. But mm-hmm. what if, why we got to see everything all the time? Why can't we just for once accept the word? Amen. The look, when that boy tell us he loves us, what we do? Accept the word. Hello. <laughs> when that young girl said, oh, you the cutest thing this oh, side Lord. of heaven. What we do? <laughs> Accept her words, right? Makes so, sense. Yes, first lady. So I was thinking. So why is it that such an issue when God, when Jesus tells God tells us something, we got to see everything. Mm. Let's mm. check ourselves, y'all. We'd have been around this mountain long enough. Mm-hmm. Let's mm-hmm. check ourselves. Mm-hmm. And look at the look at the results. Of them, as first lady was mentioned, look at the results yes. that happened to to them when they obeyed Jesus. That's right. So many fish had to call for, "Hey, y'all, come over here and come help us." Because <laughs> they didn't want to lose in it; they couldn't believe mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because after all, as she was, as she reminded us, they had been fishing all night already, all night long. That's so a long time. You know what they tell me too all night long? Time. Time. <laughs> time. Let's time. let's use that other synonym. That word that means the same, different word, but needs the same thing. Time. Yeah. And sometimes we don't want to do time. We do oh, time yeah. for the crime, but won't do time for Jesus. Oh, I did you hear him bragging? I knocked these 18 months out. I'll knock this two year out. When he when he asked him to pray one hour. One hour. One. one hour. And they fell asleep. They and couldn't they fell asleep. The eyes was too heavy. They let the sleep demon attack him. And he conquered him. Yes. So God wants the believer to know and to realize that if we will persevere. And we yes. will push in yes. prayer. We push yes. in obedience yes. to him. And we can accomplish the things that seem to be impossible. Mm-hmm. Even if we tried it before. Mm-hmm. Just like the ju- unjust judge who was not going to avenge this woman. He had already made up his mind. He didn't care. 
but because of her persistence. And he mm -hmm. said, mm -hmm. because she kept coming, mm -hmm. because she didn't stop, she didn't get, she didn't faint. And you know, I, I want to give her some credit. I believe my sister, she and I don't win every day. She probably went different times. <laughs> So that he couldn't block her. That's yeah. why he was able to see her so much. She went morning. She probably went her evening. She might have probably went a noonday or even a night before he went to bed. That's aggravating. If mm -hmm. you see that over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because she had to do something different, President. Because it, she right. already knew that that guy, that guy wasn't going to change his mind. Mm -hmm. he, he was an evil one. Yes. He wasn't even one. Because he don't fear God. Oh, my mm -hmm. goodness. He don't fear man or God. So he was a bad head. Yes, he was. Yes. But we can't give up after one attempt. Sometimes a believer must press on when it seems that, you know, we've done all that we can do. Mm -hmm. Even when our back's against the wall. We sing that song. Well, we sing that song. My back is against the wall. Mm -hmm. But look what God did. Yeah. And when it seems like nothing is going right, seems like nothing is going right, there is a time we must hang in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As the song say, don't stop praying. You know what Pastor love that song. The Lord, Lord is, is not. Nigh. Don't He's stop near. praying. He'll hear your, your cry. Yes. The mm -hmm. Lord has But promised. if you don't say nothing, he can't hear you. <laughs> you right. got to open your mouth. Think that's right. You that's tell right. him. He needs to know your voice. Mm -hmm. That's what they used to tell me. We're saying thank you, Jesus, for you, but has God heard you? Yes. Have you told him thank you? I do thank you. But well, mm -hmm. what about you? Yes. Mm -hmm. What they say? Come on, baby. Let him hear you. That's right. Yes. Let him hear you. Yes. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, again, don't stop praying. He'll answer you. Don't stop praying. Don't give up. Don't get tired. Persevere. Push forward. Push mm -hmm. forward. That's another song that's on the radio playing these days. Push forward. Move forward. Mm -hmm. Push forward. Um, okay. any, co any questions or comments? Because I'm about done. We have... 815. Um, well, yes, sir. I like to admonish all of us that let's take the attitude of the young lady that kept going to the unjust. Because a lot of times we have to deal with people that are not saved and sanctified. Well, we need something Amen. from them or we need assistance. And ne we need to know how to act. Now, yes. folks here that went there raging and with a knife in a hand, they would have kept on the spot. So, you know, you have to get wisdom That's and true. knowing how to approach them. And yes. that uh, prayer does work. So mm -hmm. we continually pray and ask God and seek the Lord for ourselves and ask God for strength to strengthen us. And since things are going so well with us and we're so bountifully breath, blessed now, let's ask God for power that when we talk to people, people be instantly get converted. Mm -hmm. I want that type of power that they will buckle down and come to him, not me. Praise God. And that when I pray for my sisters and brothers, they would instantly claim their healing. Yes. I need my grandchildren delivered. Oh, I yes. need them safe. I need them uh, in his cocoon yes. where he can keep them in, in care, in his care. So we still got a lot to pray for. Amen. That neighborhood that we're in and those people on the opposite side of the street that sit on the porch. And you know, I, got, I told my husband, I don't know if it We've been down on that. I know they'll tell you they go to a church, but we can at least approach them. It's a new group going all the time. They're not the same people. They change about every month, if you notice, or paying any attention. It's more like a group home down there. And there's young adults sitting on the porch, rolling cigarettes. Yes, they are. So we, we have to pray for that for courage so that we can get together. And we, we'll put on our sneakers and socks and go down there and spread the good news. Amen. Amen. Witness is still essential and vital. We don't just climb up and shut up because we got saved yes. and, and boast on what we got. God Amen. always bless us with stuff. You know, the ability to get wealth, God does that. 
Amen. Praise God. Now, what are we doing for the kingdom? Let's think about it. Amen. What are we doing? What else can we do? What else can we do? Mm-hmm. What else can we do? How can I fill my role? How can mm-hmm. I fill the seat somewhere mm-hmm. with my family, with friends, acquaintances? Mm-hmm. So that's a lot to think about, but we need this. And we say it all the time, but it's true. And yes, it is a great falling away. You see, folks don't want to come, but right. somebody is still waiting for an invite. You got just got to reach that one. Somebody is still waiting for an invite, even in the midst of those that don't want to come. Right. There's somebody out there. And ask God to show you that one. And we are not a black church. No. Oh, we got a black folk. Right. Well, right. we're not. <laughs> we're not. <laughs> yeah. But we are open to all colors. Yes. Praise God. Because as Pastor Teller, God is not American. He's not a black guy, white guy. Amen. Hey, Korean or whatever. Right. So anyway, we, we just thank God for the word and for encouragement. And then we know where we stand. Mm-hmm. When we, when the characters that we talk about tonight, then we know how our shortcomings. I'm not talking about nobody. I'm just talking right. about my shortcomings yes. and how we could do better. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because even when you think about first day the shortcoming, you think about the disciples that was with Jesus. With him, that's right. And they still was not persistent when he needed them most when he was getting ready to Absolutely. be crucified. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know about you. I don't want to disappoint the Lord. The Lord that did too much for me. He done brought me out of too much stuff. Yes. He done performed too many miracles. Yes. I said, I got to get something right in my life. Lord, help me to get something right and do something right this time. That's right. That's how I look at it. That's how Mm -hmm. I look at it. That's right. Amen. 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 Any other, any questions? Any questions about um, persistence, perseverance in prayer? So when you ask, so when you think about our lesson tonight, you can ask yourself, how can I persevere in prayer? Mm-hmm. Where am I lacking? Huh. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What can I do? What can I do, God? Ooh. Right, right. Mm. Mm-hmm. That I can be uh, uh, I could persevere in prayer. I could be more consistent in my mm-hmm. prayer life. Mm-hmm. You know, our pastor's been teaching us this for a long time now to mm-hmm. how to, you know, they're encouraging us and teaching us how to persevere, how to press in our prayer life, how to have faith. He talked about that in our, in our prayer life, where we pray. Mm-hmm. He even sing that song, All Things Are Possible. Mm-hmm. If you only believe. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. So when we are persevering in prayer, it will it will help us. It will help us to uh-huh. accomplish those impossible things. Uh-huh. Woo, I got excited because you think about those impossible things that's uh-huh. not possible with man. But what the song say? All things are possible. Hallelujah! God bless you. This this. This evening, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you tonight, God. We thank you, glory to God. We thank you, God, for opportunity to share your word on tonight, God, to study your word, oh God. Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. God, help us. Help us in our prayer life in the name of Jesus. Help us, God. Help us. Help us to pray, God. Help us, oh God. Help us, God. Help us. God, we need your help on tonight, God. We need your, we need your help, oh God. Help us. Help Help your church tonight, God. Help your church, oh God. Help the people of God. Glory to your name, God. For us to persevere in our prayer life, God. And we have faith, oh God, as we pray, God. As we pray, seek your voice, oh God. Seek you, oh God, in our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.